Welcome to the Agent From Within podcast, the only podcast that's here to develop the real estate agent as a human being, to help you get out of your own way, to actually align yourself to what you really want in your life and then build a real estate business around that. We have to focus on the person behind the strategies. Yes, this is going to be filled with tactics, business advice, amazing interviews. But if you're not in the right place mentally and emotionally, you will self-sabotage your business. You will chase. You will compare. This is about creating the best race car driver, not just the best race car. Any race car driver can jump into any car and win the race. We need to develop you as a human being. This is the only place that real estate agents can actually focus on growing yourself and growing your business. Cheers. What I want to do is I want to talk about perfectionism. This is really interesting. This is something that's like, I'm very big into self-sabotage because I've done it so much in my life and overcome so many things. And I'm sure I'm going to overcome more. This is a really interesting topic. So I've got some notes here. I want to have a conversation around this. So first of all, I'm going to need you guys to get a little bit involved here. Um, On the chat or even verbally, from a scale of 1 to 10, and you're not allowed to use a 7, how much does perfectionism affect your your business and life? Because it's all the same. James, 8. We've got a, let's see, 8, J, 0 to 1, Graham, 10. Uh, Tyler, three, Jackie, nine, Corinne, eight, Mikhail, eight. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, this is a really, used to be higher. Who's this? Oh, yeah. On a six and a half, seven. No, like what a cheat. So we're going to go with, we're going to go with uh, six. No, if we round up, you got to go eight now. Guarantee, Aaron, you're an eight. You can't, you can't go six and a half, seven. Just because I said seven, you can't do. You just got to close. 6.999. <laughs> we're going eight. Anyways. Okay. So, so here's the thing, guys. Um, can you guys please tell me, like, that's a weird question because when I ask a one to 10 scale question, by the way, in your relationships, if you ever want to do something interesting, ask people that you love a question, like watch the difference. I'm going to show you how to coach a little bit is if you ask, let's say your, lo- your loved ones, everyone's got a loved one somewhere, mom, dad, husband, wife, whatever, boyfriend, girlfriend, you, or a close friend. If you said, hey, how's our relationship? Oh, it's good. What it does nothing. Because I didn't learn anything. But if I said at a scale of one to ten, how's our relationship? It's very exposing because they're like, oh, it's about an eight. And you can't use a seven. So it's either gotta be a six or an eight, right? So the seven's the, the universal answer. So the thing is, you wanna you wanna ask good questions that way because what happens is I see where you guys see yourself. It doesn't mean it's true. It's a really interesting thing to say, I'm a three or I'm a ten. It's just interesting. That's called, that's an example of how you see yourself. So that answer is really interesting, but is it true? I don't know. So let's go, let's dig into this a little bit farther. What is perfectionism? Can someone give me, what is it? Like we, it, it's another thing from a technique side of things, guys, from a coaching side of things and communication side, don't ever assume that you're talking about the same thing in life on anything. If anyone's been to any of my workshops, I put a big sign that says sex. And everyone loves it. They get all giddy. And there's a big giant sign on the wall that says sex. And I say, well, what does it mean? And I bring people up to the stage and I say, what are the top five? What are the five things? Give me five words. And they're all different. One's totally crazy, like perverted and loving it. One's like uh, very private. And like, if we're just, what I'm trying to say is if I'm talking about perfectionism, we all have different definitions. And so we have to establish what are we talking about? Okay. So Graham says not producing unless you feel something is perfect. Okay. Okay. Let's get some more going here, guys. What, give me, give me some, give me some thoughts on this. I'm curious to see what people think perfectionism is. Procrastination. Okay. Interesting. Never making a mistake. Yeah. Never making a mistake. Good one. Good one. Maybe one or two more. And I've got a definition I'm going to read here. I got one coming in here. Uh, Corinne, you need to have everything exactly right before you execute not willing to execute for fear of failure or judgment. So you think about this, guys. So let's, let's break this down a little bit more. So let's talk about the good side of perfectionism. Because we're, obviously we're going to go into the negative side, but is there, a good, is there a good side of being a perfectionist? So 
So, so here's the thing. Don't, don't you think you'd produce good work? Like it's, there's got to be a side of it where like, it, like someone had to be a perfectionist to like build the space, space station. Like there's got to be a side to it. Yes, you can hold yourself to a higher standard. So I just want you to know that everything in life always has a shadow side and a good side. Everything really does. Cocaine might have a good side somewhere and a bad side somewhere. Beer has a good side and a bad side. Like, I'm just saying like everything does. I'm just saying like instead of beating the living crap out of it, we'll just talk about it a little bit different. Um, okay. So the good side of it is I think we're higher performers. We're driven. We're motivated. High standards of work. Right, because if I'm going to be a perfectionist and I'm going to deal with my client, I'm probably going to be better than someone. Like naturally, I'm thinking that's what it is. Now, there's a shadow side to this, though. What's the dark side of it? What's the dark side of perfectionism? Since we're kind of establishing what it is, um, I, I, before you go there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I took some notes here. Like, it, I created a mind map. If you guys know what a mind map is, you write down the one word in the middle, and I wrote perfectionism, and then I write, a, I draw a line in another bubble, and I just draw lines. Nothing's ever good enough. That's Eric. Yeah. There's a, there's a, nothing is ever good enough. Okay. What other ones do we have? Uh, it keeps you from doing what you need to. Yes. Yes. Analysis paralysis. Yes. Guys, what this is interesting. It's, I, I feel like those are all words called stuck and all words called slow. If we're in the, one of the biggest problems, we don't execute and execution is how you win. And so if you think about it, like I've got a definition here. Um, it's this, here's what perfect means. Having all the required or desirable elements, qualities, or characteristics as good as it possibly can be. That's what perfect is. Perfectionism, check this out, characterized by a person striving for flawlessness and setting high performance standards accompanied by critical self-evaluations and concerns regarding others' evaluations. So I've been thinking about it a lot because I, I coach a lot of people and perfectionism is one of the hardest ones and one of the big things we need to really talk about. So some of the things are about self, like if you guys struggle with anxiety at all, like there's a sense of anxiety, you can really tie it back to perfectionism a lot of times. Like if someone's got like a major perfectionism, they're probably struggling with anxiety, depression. Like it just, it's just this weird connection because you're just never quite fucking good enough. And there's this feeling of just, you can't scratch the itch and go, great job. It's like, there's always another level. Those who are Virgos have the issue with it most likely. I don't even know what I am. I think I'm a Virgo. I'm fucked then. So, <laughs> so what I'm trying to say those guys, I've written some thoughts here. This is the stuff that I went, I want to tie this in is first of all, um, we're concerned with other people's evaluation, keeping a standard, high performance standard, uh, need to be perfect. Now, I think it's a feeling of being safe. I think it's a feeling of being safe in some level because if you're perfect, you'll never be questioned. You'll never be judged. You might even be praised. It's a safe place to be if you're really scared of rejection. If you really have a low self-esteem, perfectionism can really put out the image that you've got it all together. But in a core belief system is that maybe you just don't believe that. So my challenge would be if you're a perfectionist, I'm wondering about your self-esteem because you won't let yourself off the hook. Why? Because the standard has to be maintained or else what? What happens? while I get judged or like, this is the honesty that you guys got to think about in your life going, how's that affecting me? If you get to the core of it. The one thing I know is this, this is the one thing that I was thinking about when I was doing a bit of a study on this is that if you guys remember I, me talking about self-awareness and authenticity, that massive study that was done about the people that make over a hundred million dollars a year, seven year study, hundreds of thousands of people uh, studied and the authenticity and self-awareness was the number one and two or the, the two things that were the common denominator with a mega, mega rich. And it's very interesting to think perfectionism, like this is my issue. First of all, if you can be yourself, if you can truly be who you are, like, understand who you are and be who you are, there you're going to get mega rich. That's the data. But I think it's a lot more than just rich. How, how authentic are you when you're doing perfectionism stuff? 
How authentic are you really you? Like how authentic is it? Is it based, isn't it based out of performance? Like it's based out of performing versus who I really am. So if you think about it, if you set the stage to show people that you're perfect, you are going to have to maintain that. But is, like if you look like you're perfect, are you? There's no way. So the thing is, it's the, there's a disconnect from authenticity and self-awareness, which makes me nervous because that's the secret sauce. That's the magic to exploding your business and making more sales and connection and the deeper connections to yourself and your family is authenticity, self-awareness. So perfectionist is opposite to this. So logically, if we're going to want to deal with this perfectionism, if we're going to get to, this, uh, get to the place where we want to be, the next level, this, this has affected me in a way where I had to be number one or I was nothing. So on the outside looking in, I didn't buy one real estate property. I bought 41 real estate properties in 14 months. What the hell, what, what was driving that? I had to be the top. I think when it comes down to it, this is why it's important to think about what's my story and how's it affecting my life? We don't got to make it a big deal. We don't got to make it a big psychological massive thing. It is, but it's not like I want to change it. So it's a little lighter going, Hey, what's your story? What's affecting your business? Okay, cool. Let's talk about it. It's not like, let's talk about how your dad beat you and everything and all this stuff. Like that's part of it. Yes. But if we can just have a common upfront story going, how's this, how, where did this come from? And, and why is it affecting my life? Well, I desperately wanted my dad to love me. I desperately wanted, he never gave me the, he never said I was good enough. He was psychologically always saying, you're just not enough. You're just not enough with his behavior. And, and all my life, I thought I just wish I could show him how to do it. And it was kind of ironic, if you really look at it, my dad was a financial planner and I choose to go into real estate investing and, and one-up him as an investor, financial advisor. <laughs> and so you start looking at the ties to your past and once you bring awareness to it, you can start letting it go. Now, now I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna read you guys, I wanna read you guys something here. It's a, it, I, put it on the, I put it on our site, I don't know if I've ever seen it yet. But this is really interesting. Harvard Business Review. You read the whole article, but there's a couple things that I found were crazy cool. Uh, there was, they did massive study on pros and cons of perfectionism, according to the research they have here. Um, where is it here? They're, they came up with two types of perfectionists. The first type was called the excellent, it's called this. The first, which, which we called excellent seeking perfectionism involves tendencies to fixate on and demand excessive high standards, excellent seeking professional, uh, perfectionists not only uh, stingently evaluate their own performance, but also hold high performance. Oh, oh sorry, I'm, I'm just reading this, but also hold high performance expectations for other people in their lives. Think about the relationship issue with that. You know, like we keep this house clean and that's the rule. There's no reason why we can't keep this house clean or whatever it is. They put high expectations on other people, which again, keep that pattern going because you never feel good enough. The second is the, this is one that's more detrimental. We call it the failure avoiding perfectionism. It involves obsessive concern and aversion to, oh, aversion to failing to reach higher performance standards. Failure avoiding perfectionists are constantly worried of the work that is not, that their work is not quite right. These are the guys that get stuck. Good enough, they're not, it's not good enough. I believe that, they're, that they will lose respect from others if they do not achieve perfection. The thing is, what's really interesting is that our results demonstrate perfectionist tendencies may be focused in just one or both of these sub-dimensions. So what this actually means is this is what's really interesting, guys. The results show that performance and perfectionism were not related to each other. So it's really interesting because you've got to be driven. You've got to go, 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 go. People that aren't perfectionists still had mega success. So we have such a high regard to this. But my biggest concern is that you guys don't execute. My biggest concern is that when you're in a listing presentation, you come as a perfectionist, you set such a high freaking standard that you have to keep that standard. You're setting yourself up to fail. You guys understand that in relationship, the reason why we actually connect is because of our imperfections. The reason why you're a beautiful human being and the most attractive thing about you is your, is your imperfections. Like you got to think about this. Has anyone seen the movie Return to Me? 
old school. Mini Driver. Okay, listen to this story. The movie goes like this. You guys want to watch it. It's cool. Here's what happens. The movie starts out with a car accident. First of all, this, his husband and wife are just dating. They're in love. Not dating. They're in love and beautiful relationship. Boom, car accident, hospital scene. Wife dies. The guy's sitting there in his, with his dog, bawling his brains out. He lost his love, lost his wife. But then the scene shifts to a hospital where the heart, she was, a low, she was an organ donor, so the heart is now in transport and is about to save another lady's life. Goes to another lady, gets transplanted, and she's got this big, ugly scar, and she's now got that heart. Now, later on, these two people meet and fall in love. And so what happens is the husband, and, uh, the, the husband finds his wife's heart in another lady, and they connect. And the thing is, it's a really cool story, but what's really interesting is there's a couple lines in it, and he talked to her. Like, it's almost emotional because it's so cool. But like, he talked to the, 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 this new girlfriend with his wife's heart and says, do you know what I remember more about my wife? Not how perfect she was. Like, when I think that she's died, and what I remember is when she farted in bed. And when she, all her quirks about her, how she wanted the cutlery the certain way, and all these imperfections is what actually tied him together and actually drew him in to love this person. It's the quirkiness about us. Guys, think about an old house that's got character. Imagine the new cookie cutter houses. You're like, meh. When you're too perfect, you're not interesting. You don't understand. You're not interesting at all. Like maybe you got a couple of quirks. Maybe there's something. But if you can just embrace the character because everyone else is, except the people that are high performers that probably have the same bullshit going on that you do, you got to have to ignore those guys. But if you can fall in love with some of your imperfections, it is what it is. We're so obsessed with being perfect. We're so obsessed in being a certain way that do you know what the side effect is, guys? No connection. Connection is the way that you do a long-term business. Like you don't need connection if you're just banging deals. Banging deals, salesmanship, just boom, boom, boom. I know guys I could give you their name that they would know. They make three to 400 grand a year and they have no referral base. Those guys are so screwed, man. They will burn out hard. And you know what's going to happen? Feast and famine because they don't have people coming back to them. That's what happens when you don't have connection. So if you're a performer, you never connected during the process. Remember, a little bit of vulnerability develops trust. Like if I came on here, guys, and I was the man, and you guys got to follow me, you wouldn't be into me. It's legitimately, perfection is literally how to push someone away unless you need their skill. There's a reason why some of my team stays together. It's not because I'm perfect, because I'm imperfect, but I'm a good dude. I'm a really good dude. I like who I am. So I wanted to break this out a little bit. I know we can't go too much farther into it, but I do want you to, I do want you to realize something else. There's sickness that comes with this as well. I don't want to scare everyone. There's a book that if you guys want to read a book, it's really, really interesting. It's called, it's called, it's called uh, Dying to Be Me. It Shift My Thinking. It's Anita Marjani. It's called Dying to Be Me. It's a story about a lady that got cancer. She, she got cancer. She had, she had through every single square inch of her body. And what she had was 100% death wish. She was on the deathbed. She ended up having a, a near-death experience. She ended up going to heaven or going to this alternate universe, universe or whatever. She, and she runs in and she talks to her dad. And she and literally was watching this whole thing. If you look at near-death experiences, there's thousands and thousands of these now. Talk to her dad. And she goes, oh, she goes, she goes, I just, he goes, I just, I just want to stay. And she goes, no, it's not time yet. Your mission's not done. Like you're not done on earth. And, he, and she goes, well, I just, I just want to stay. It's so, so peaceful here. So love. I don't want to go back to that body that I was all broken. And, and, and then she says, he goes, no, you're not done. And he goes, well, what is my mission? Like, what am I supposed to do on earth? Like, why would I go back? And she says, the guy goes, oh, you, you don't have to worry about your purpose. You don't got to worry about that at all. You just got to live fearlessly and be you. Just fearlessly be yourself and, you will, and, and everything else will fall in line. And that was really interesting. And then what happened was she comes back and she's healed within six months. Every single square inch of cancer is gone. True story, documented, it's all done. And she's fully healed completely. And she had this massive awareness. She knew 100% where the cancer was from. I don't, I don't care if you don't like it or not. I know it's a hot topic. She goes, it was because I, because the fear of people. She said, I was so scared of what people would think all the time. She goes, after being in this heaven or wherever she was, she just knew clear as day that fear 
And that's where perfectionism comes in. It's so negative that it'll just act like it means I'm scared of what people are going to say. That's why I'm on a mission, guys. I'm absolutely on a mission. You guys be yourself. You want to know what happens? You want to see magic happen in your life? You want to see the purpose come in your life? You be you, be you for real. Understand that you got to tear down all the old belief systems and find out what you believe. Stop, stop just listening to your loved ones. Start, what do you want? You got to stand up for yourself because at the end of the day, if we're pleasing everyone around us and perfectionism is even your own drive, it's like it depends if perfectionism is an internal thing or if perfectionism is scared of what people are going to think. But I wanted, to rever- I wanted to bounce this thing, this thought, return to me. Sorry, not return to me, the, the dying to be me was interesting because if you live fearlessly, your purpose will be finished. Let Be yourself for real. And she got healed of all her cancer and she realized she said it's from being scared of what people think. I think it's a tragedy so much and I still, I still care what people think and it's something I'm working on day and night. It's something I want to be just, I want to find out who Ben really is. I want to find out who you guys really are. We've been conditioned by our culture, by our religion, by everyone around us and by our industries, by our brokers, by other real estate agents. We just adopt people's beliefs. What do you believe? I'm not saying what to believe. I'm saying just believe, just ask yourself what's yours. So when it comes to perfectionism, I would just challenge the fact of going, this is very serious. It's not something to mess around with. And I think you need to start failing a little bit. So how do you deal with perfectionism? You got to be less perfect. <laughs> you got to sit in it and you got to feel that feeling of like, it's not so bad. Maybe, it, maybe like I, I, guys, I was forced to deal with my perfectionism because I, for example, I can't spell. I try everything I possibly can. I get beat up online. Like I can't spell and I'm a professional. <laughs> I, I, I struggle with it. I see it backwards. It doesn't work for me. I, I, wish, I, I wish I could have outperformed so I could fin- f- fix it. I know women that were insecure for so long and they became beautiful. They became so beautiful. They've got beautiful hair, their body. They even got a pair of boobs and they got these lashes and they finally got to the place where now I accept myself. But if one second drop, if one standard drops, The chaos just gets crazy. The insecurity gets crazy. I can't live like that. So I encourage you guys when it comes to the perfectionist thing, I just encourage you to realize it's something that might need to go or just at least something to focus on, bring awareness to. Uh, So that's what, uh, that's what I have to say about that guys. So anyways, um, any thoughts on it? Any, it's kind of heavy and it's pretty one-to-one kind of conversations can break down the personal stuff. So any, any takeaways, any things you, that you guys want to comment on? So let's all go be perfect, right? <laughs> anyway, something to think about. I just think it's a dangerous thing to be perfectionist. I think you just lack connection with yourself, lack connection with others. You'll have to be a performance person. And when people agree to be friends with you subconsciously, you're just going to always have to keep that standard. That's the hard part. Because if you ever want to change that standard, you got to renegotiate the relationship. So, and if you want to, one more last thing, perfectionism, when you're a real estate agent, you will get, <laughs> be perfectly imperfect. Exactly, Jen. Um, the, the one thing is though, guys, when, if the perfectionist people can be used in abuse. Just remember that. It's very easy to use someone like that. Like you're not keeping your standard. Well, that's weird. Why are you not serving me? I hired you to be the best real estate agent. Holy shit, man. You jump to it at that point. And that's how you get manipulated. So you got to be confident, not like per, I'm, I'm freaking amazing at what I do, but I'm not perfect. So guys, one line I use in my CMAs, I look at them in the eyes as I just want to tell you something. My goal here is perfection. My goal is perfection, but we both know that that's not realistic. So I want to tell you the one thing I can promise you is that when I make a mistake, I will own it. I will not blame anyone else. And if it costs me the listing, I will go down with the listing with honesty. But I can tell you right now, my goal is perfection. What does that do? I set the standard to let them give me, give me a break if I, let, I fail. The other pitch is, I'm perfect. I'll do it. I'll kill it. Don't worry. It's in my hand. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. I got it. No, no, no. We both know perfection is the goal, but that's not realistic. But I can tell you, I won't blame anyone. And I'll, tell you, I'll go down with the ship if, if, if I make a mistake. See, that's called, that's called being, it's almost like it's just letting you be yourself. So it's this very good line to set expectations to people rather than coming in every single relationship, you can set those expectations. You don't have to be like, uh, yeah, I'll get it done. I'm perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just won't happen. <laughs>